priest is Stefan Raggio. Stefan is a senior in the School of Foreign Service from Summit, New Jersey. He is majoring in international politics and completing a certificate in Asian studies. On campus, Stefan serves as the chair of the Alternative Spring Break program and a trip leader for the spring break in Appalachia. His freshman year, he discovered a passion for dancing and has since then been a choreographer for Rangila, the South Asian Society's cultural dance show, and a dancer on GU Jawani, Georgetown's Bonker team. He's also been an orientation advisor for the past two years for new student orientation. After graduation, Stefan will be with Teach for America in Newark, New Jersey, teaching secondary social studies. Please welcome Stefan. It was the spring of 2010. I was a 17-year-old boy about to graduate from an all-male Catholic high school in Morristown, New Jersey. And I was pretty eager for what college had in store, particularly the fact that girls would be around. <laughs> After I decided to come to Georgetown, and in those months leading up to new student orientation, there was one statement I consistently heard from my teachers and family friends. College will be the best four years of your life. Now at the time, I didn't think much of that statement. I didn't know what college would be like, so I really couldn't make a judgment call. Well, four years have passed since then, and it is scary how close graduation is. But I think I've finally come to a conclusion about that statement. My teachers and family friends were wrong. I do not think Georgetown will be the best four years of my life. Now, you might be thinking, did they screen this guy before letting him <laughs> speech? How could he possibly say that at an admitted student's weekend? <laughs> so allow me to qualify my statement. While college may have been the best four years for some of my teachers or friends, and I know that Georgetown has given me my greatest years thus far, I do not believe my time here will be the best four years of my life. Rather, I am confident that Georgetown has prepared me for the most awesome years of my life ahead. I realize that's a pretty big claim, and it's really only something I've realized being a senior here. So I want to relay why I think being a Georgetown student has prepared me for the best years of my life. Thinking of ways to communicate this, however, has been difficult for me. First, it's difficult because it's tough for me to put all of my emotions and my feelings towards this school into words and I'm worried I won't do it justice, but I'm going to try. Second, it's difficult because I don't want to talk about how you all will love Georgetown, or how the hilltop will become your home, or how you will grow as a person being a student here. Because speaking in such a manner assumes too much and concerns abstract experiences you all have not had. So rather, in a quasi-selfish manner, I want to discuss how I love Georgetown how the Hilltop has become my home, and how much of I have grown here, because all of my experiences exist within me. My hope is that through my experiences, I can convey what Georgetown can become for all of you, both while a student here and beyond. So what are these experiences that I keep talking about? Admittedly, being a student at Georgetown, I have had a flood of amazing and funny memories. Reflecting on my four years, I think of the time I shook Vice President Joe Biden's hand on the Village Seat patio, but only after the Secret Service could see both of my hands clearly. <laughs> I think of the seven times I've danced my heart out on this stage, and the opportunity to take classes with former U.S. ambassadors and retired members of the U.S. National Security Council. I think of training for and successfully running a half marathon through the heart of D.C and waiting in line to attend lectures given by former UK Prime Minister Gordon Brown, US National Security Advisor Susan Rice, former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, and former US Ambassador to China and Republican presidential candidate John Huntsman. I think of waking up at 8.51 a.m. freshman year to a phone call from my Chinese professor asking why I had not yet arrived for my 8.50 a.m. class, <laughs> to which I immediately ran to in my printed pajama pants. 
I think of traveling to Appalachia on three occasions with Georgetown's Alternative Spring Break program, learning about economic issues there. I think about studying abroad in Beijing and Taiwan, going to Jesuits for life advice, and discovering what Hinduism means to me by attending weekly puja services. These experiences have all shaped me, but they are not what makes Georgetown distinctive to me. Yes, I consider all of these episodes in my life great in their own right, and I value them tremendously. But they are not what set Georgetown apart. Every great university offers its students outstanding moments, and Georgetown is most definitely no exception to that. Ask any student here, and he or she will be able to share similar eye-popping stories. But these types of stories are not what I want to focus on. Instead, I want to stress the subtle Georgetown experiences, the ones I didn't even realize were happening on a daily basis for a long time. These experiences happened during late night discussions with my roommate over topics ranging from our childhood love for the Digimon movie to issues of race and ethnicity in America. They happened when I went to professor's office hours to discuss my future plans with Teach for America and why I love studying China. They happened when I traveled on alternative spring break and discussed Appalachian culture and society, not only with my Georgetown peers, but also with stakeholders in the region. They happened every time I went to dance practice and either goofed around with my friends or taught a new dance move. What I'm getting at is that these are all experiences I started having daily the moment I became a Georgetown student. And while they all may seem disparate, they all have one unifying theme. They slowly taught me what it means to be a man or woman for others. You may recognize this phrase as one of the several Jesuit values of Georgetown. On the surface, it seems pretty straightforward. Men and women for others. As a freshman, I thought this meant serving others, volunteering, doing good work, and maybe even feeling good about it at the end of the day. I was dead wrong. It, all of those subtle, daily experiences taught me that men and women for others is so much more. It entails engaging people in dialogue to better understand them and broaden your own perspective and maybe even challenge your perspective, whether it be in a formal classroom setting like Problem of God or in your own dorm room. It is using service, whether that's a conversation or teaching a new dance move or working in a soup kitchen in Appalachia as an introduction to a person or a community and using that as a springboard to understand more deeply and think more clearly. But as I said before, I didn't even realize that I was learning to become a man or woman for others when I entered as a freshman. While writing this speech, I actually tried to think of the first time I interacted with this Jesuit value. And surprisingly enough for myself, it was when I met one of my best friends, Sean, here in the shower stalls of New South, of all places. <laughs> It was one of the first days of our pre-orientation program, first year orientation to community involvement, or as we like to call it, FOSA. And one night, I decided to take, a, to take a shower before sleeping. About five minutes later, someone hops into the stall next to me, and I figure, I'm in college now, might as well just strike up a conversation. <laughs> so I decide to start talking to a complete stranger while showering. I start off with the casual, <clears throat> yo, so, <laughs> and slowly, our conversation grows a lot deeper. I learned about Sean's experiences growing up as a child of immigrants from Taiwan, and he learned about mine being the child of parents who came to the USA from Sri Lanka. We asked each other questions to better understand the cultures of our parents and how they affected us growing up. Quite frankly, it was a pretty deep conversation for the shower. <laughs> and I'm surprised you didn't get weirded out by me. <laughs> but we've been roommates since our sophomore year. Thinking back, that conversation was my introduction to what it means to be a man or woman for others. Sean and I both took the time to listen to one another, to think, to analyze, and ask difficult questions, to better increase our own understandings of our cultures, our backgrounds, and our identities. But at the time, my 17-year-old self didn't come out of the shower and think, well, that was a great conversation to teach me about Jesuit values. No. It's something I only realize now 
four years later. And that, that is what makes Georgetown amazing. It's not the small experiences of having those, uh, those great conversations. It's the institutionalized framework of thinking of those daily conversations or attending that problem of God class as a great journey, teaching us what it means to be a man or woman for others. So going back to my opening statements, Georgetown has given me the best years of my life so far, not only because of this four-year journey, learning about the meaning of men and women for others, but also because of those hilarious and amazing memories I previously mentioned that I know I will cherish. But it's from that four-year journey alone, learning about Jesuit values, that I can say with confidence that I know my best years lay ahead. The value of men and women for others in particular is part of the reason why I even wanted, wanted to apply to Teach for America and has given me the confidence and initiative to not just teach my students next year, but actually take the time to understand their lives and their interests. I know it will be a struggle at points, but asking those tough questions while I was a student here, similar to the types of questions Sean and I asked each other in the New South showers, has prepared me well to face those challenges head on. As I noted before though, my journey at Georgetown, my experiences here, are all uniquely my own. As a student at Georgetown, each of you will have your own experiences that will make your four years here so memorable. However, we all as Georgetown students start on this same journey, learning what it means to be men and women for others. All Georgetown students get the chance to have fantastic experiences and learn and reflect about them within the context of Georgetown's Jesuit values. Values that, if you let them, will, ha will help shape who you might want to become. So I want to conclude going back to that classic question we love explaining to tour groups and events like Gap Weekend. What exactly is a Hoya? While the correct and witty answer may be yes, because Hoya literally means what, I want to try and offer a different one. Being a Hoya to me, means being someone who has started this journey to learn about the meaning of men and women for others in the context of what we all individually make of Georgetown. And there is no great secret or one set path of this journey as a Hoya. All you have to do is let it begin. Thank you so much, and Hoya Saxa.